My name is Dr. Jacqueline Nuku. I'm a seagrass researcher, a conservation leader, based at the Kenya Marine and Fisheries Research Institute. I'm a senior scientist there and I also coordinate research activities uh, within the institution. I have also represented uh, the region, the Western Indian Ocean region, as the president of WAOMSA, so I'm the immediate past president, and I've moved on to become the chair of the African Expert Group for the Ocean Decade, and also an, an expert in the Expert Group for Ocean Literacy globally under the decade. It has been extremely gratifying. I have uh, enjoyed working with communities, I had an opportunity to run the Kenya Coastal Development Project and that uh, took me from the environment and focus on you know, sea grasses, its ecology, its physiology, to looking more at people, understanding their needs, behaviors, and uh, community empowerment. And I find that extremely exciting. Uh, it's very clear, I think, from the sessions we've had with communities uh, today that they're keen on technology. Uh, they're wise enough to know that um, the methods they have probably used in the past in a ch may not help them in a changing environment. And so their biggest plea to us has been, can we learn uh, new technologies which we can apply in our systems and so um, when, where there is a desire from communities for that, then you find the technology that is being introduced through the Blue Empowerment Project and the integrated system for fisheries and aquaculture, then uh, becomes a direct response to communities and their need uh, to learn something new. What I would say is that um, we should not forget that communities also have knowledge. They have indigenous knowledge. It won't be written uh, down formally. It will be passed on orally. It is embedded in the hearts and the minds of the young men and women uh, that have learned from their, the past generation, their grandfathers and grandmothers. And that knowledge is extremely critical in designing an IMT. One has to think outside the box but sit with the communities and co-design together because it is in co-design that I see that uh, there will be success. Co-design does not mean that as researchers and scientists we just sit in a room and design but it means you have to go out there, sit on a stone, sit under a mango tree, a coconut tree and really listen, draw in the ground until you come to the design that you all feel you are happy with and that integrates the community knowledge. I, I know in the past, uh, the women were able to access women, the Women Fund, the Youth Fund, and if you ask them, they would disclose many benefits that they had from those funds. We are uh, in a new dispensation and we have the Hasla Fund which we are told you just need to register online on your phone and access uh, the grant. So I think credit is becoming more accessible and uh, we are told uh, based on that fund, it's, gradu it's a gradual incremental fund. So you start with a small amount, pay back, you qualify for a bigger and bigger amount as long as you're able to pay back. Uh, being women um, is not a limitation. They are women that have sustained um, the seaweed farming from infancy to now uh, upscaling to different farms along the coast and they've been extremely successful. So I do say that uh, credit is available at rates that are uh, favourable. They just need to be made aware, um, taught how to access it and then lastly have a business plan that uh, can pay back the loan, not, not to have a loan that just sits uh, and is used on things that may not pay back, but uh, take loans that uh, are aligned to a clear pathway and a clear business plan. Now, um, 
Okay. I'm aware that uh, the IMT technology is um, a grant uh, or funded already. But then if it is successful, the women can also in the process be taught um, how to manage a business a bit more and uh, how to multiply that technology. So perhaps now they start with one, one experimental uh, farm, but they could uh, slowly put resources towards upscaling if they find it profitable. Uh, the bigger challenge is uh, the lack of dialogue, lack of transparency and disclosure. So I think that's the first we need to make sure as a project team that there is a high level of disclosure uh, there is a documented uh, conflict resolution uh, process. Uh, you also need, I think you do have um, community experts and gender experts to really look at what type of conflicts would arise. They have arisen in the past. Uh, it's not new where um, there were times when men felt the women were doing better. They were getting more resources and the men left, were left out. That would be a conflict you need to uh, embrace and uh, incl be inclusive of both genders. When I spoke on the first day of the meeting, I really encouraged uh, this BMU to come up with a gender policy that is really prescriptive uh, of what they would like to see in terms of inclusivity and equity so that no one is left behind, that there are no grievances that arise from something that could very easily be solved. Um, other issues would be uh, marketing of the product, use of uh, funding once it comes in. You have to remember that this is a communal project, it's collective effort. How do you weigh the effort? in terms of the benefits, who benefits, where do the resources go, when, uh, if for instance, uh, there is fish, a fish harvest, who takes the resources. Uh, so it's important that these things are well documented and agreed on in an open and transparent manner and disclosures are made so that um, at the end of the day the benefits are agreed on and um, the benefits may not be a monetary benefit to community members, but they need to agree, do we want to contribute to school fees, for instance? Do we want to contribute to medicines or a salary of a health worker? Uh, do we want to have one of our own train as a doctor with these resources? And that doctor comes back to our village, uh, there's health centers, and becomes our doctor, for instance. So we need, they need to uh, have that dialogue because at the end of the day, uh, projects that are commonly run uh, tend to run into problems when we have not had uh, that level of dialogue initially. One thing we have seen is theft of uh, even fish in ponds like this. So uh, what type of safeguards Will the project team put in? Will you hire the men to be community guards? Uh, and it's not for free, they need to benefit from it. So how, what type of safeguards uh, do we put in uh, to be able to overcome the challenges? The other thing is um, location of uh, the cages. Location matters. Um, it may be, you, uh, and also mobility, is it something that is well anchored? It could be swept off during a uh, very rough seas, during a period of very rough tides, uh, and it happens occasionally that seaweeds are blocked off and taken into deeper areas where there is no access. And the last thing, because we're including women, it's important to consider where you're locating uh, so there's access and there's also, there was also an appeal for a boat for access and safety at sea. Uh, what came out of this meeting was a critical call for marketing support. I think as ACTS you could do uh, things that 
uh, government may not have been able to do uh, in helping them uh, find market and undertake some of the processes uh, that are required um, and look at uh, seaweed production as your on site as a full business and understand you know how much production do they need for value addition uh, this came up in this meeting and the community can see that young people have gone to school and i've seen a lot of young people engaging in this cbo it's not only the older generation it's been able to tap uh, downwards and i see opportunity for this cbo to be a limelight for coastal communities Considering their small beginnings in 2001, um, I was very proud when they were able to host us in this meeting uh, and guide us in this meeting. They were, you know, practically our hosts. Um, they've turned the table round, and that is something we need to document. These are important lessons that uh, a community group uh, and a CBO can host us, run us through a meeting with the technical support that has been provided by technical experts, but they have been in charge. And I think putting communities in the driver's seat uh, is important. And there are many lessons that uh, need to be documented in terms of the process. How did you come to that agreement? Uh, is there any other types of supports you've given them to have the confidence and to be able to give leadership to a journey like this?